Welcome back everyone. Let's work on Zelda. Alright. So we have a Zelda pause screen. We have a Zelda, I believe it's, uh, um, is it this for drawing on the screen? Yes. So this is for outputting this, the screen. We might make another slide program for basically loading uh, what the next screen is, or we might we might alter this one to to just kind of do that, you know, inside of inside of what we're doing. So um, we should. I'm thinking we should start at. We should just have like coordinates, um, and I guess we could just start at zero zero. Um, for our coordinates, so yeah, that that should that should work, I believe. So. Let's put zero zero. Ooh, let's see which core, which variable should we use for defining where we are. I might use n and o because that's like x and y on the its positions right above x and y. So um, n and o. So o will be the y and n will be the x, and that will be basically where we are um, and here's where we called here's where we call Zelda O um, so depending on what the coordinates are at Zelda O we should store different things into the matrix so right now we have um, hmm. We have a 10 at 9 at 8, 8, 9 at 7, 7, and a 5 at 2, 2. I wonder what that... The 5... Oh, no, no, the, the 5 at 2, 2, that's for the inventory. So that has nothing to do with... Um, with our screen that just has to do with inventory so let's actually just move that kind of like out of the way here um, 10 at 8 8 and 9 at 7 7 okay let's just copy that over here just so that we can replicate what we already have so 10 store as matrix a8 Eight, nine at matrix A seven seven. Okay, but we're gonna put this inside of a loading um, check statement. So we can say if n equals zero, then, and then we can end here. Okay. Um, so all the coordinates where the x is 0 are going to be within this and then inside of that statement we'll have um, statements if o equals 0 then so we'll have y coordinates in there and so basically if we have a new x coordinate we can do that in a separate you know separate if statement structure and then but if our y changes, then we just put it in here. Um, so if we go off the screen, we have to basically um, change our our n and our o. So um, and then we have to reload um, what we're where we're at. So we should. So I should be able to edit. I guess it would be down here. 
So if so these are actually pretty important. So if x equals 17, that means we're actually we're actually changing screens. So 1 is going to be stored into x, but we're also going to do a few other changes. So then um, 1 is going to be stored into x, but we're also going to add 1 to our n because we're changing screens. And then we need to call um, program uh, Zelda O to reload our, our screen to reload basically where we are now later on I might have to like alter this to make sure I'm checking if there's an actual oops if I'm make, uh, checking to make sure there's an actual like wall that we're trying to move on top of um, which I don't no, if we maybe we don't have to do that because here, yeah, we can save the old N and the old O. So basically, if we're moving on top of a wall, uh, we'll load the screen, but then we'll see that we're on top of a wall, and then it'll move us back uh, to whatever screen we were at before. So, um. I can basically store i and j um, into here, so n and o, so n is going to be stored as i, and o is going to be stored as j. Um, that way, uh, if there's like a wall there, then we can just store them back, so i and j are going to be stored back into N and O. So back up here we have. Um, so even if we do, I guess if we do hit a wall, it'll detect that because we call this, which updates the the matrix. Um, and then we'll see that we're actually inside a wall, so we'll actually load back. Um, and actually, I need to call that though. So. I need to I need to actually check um, if and then so we're checking if I does not equal n or uh, j does not equal o okay but that's inside of the where we you know if we actually hit a wall then we'll see did we actually change screens if we did change the screens back and then we need to call um, basically we need to call let's hold n again um, let's hold o sorry so there we go now we're we redraw if we hit a wall and go through okay so now we have to do this for each of these cases, um, if then um, 16 stores x, so this is if we're going left, so n minus 1 stores n, and then 16 stores x, and then we call matrix or zelda o. Yep. Seems to be fine to me. Um, if y equals 9, then one store is y. So let's put it then here, an end here. Program Zelda O. Okay, so this is if we're moving down. Then we need to increment the y one. O plus 1 store is O. Okay, and then if we move up, we have to do the same thing. So if y equals 0 then 8 stores y um, program zelda o and we need to increment the y value so o plus 1 stores o now let's see if this works 
If I move up, I should erase the screen. Uh oh, that's not good. If I move down, oh, you know what it is. I know exactly what it is. It's uh, I need. I forgot to edit this something in here. Um, before we do anything, we need to do. We need to simply do a fill. Um, that way we can qualitatively fill in the map. We don't don't need to fill it in with like zero zeros or anything like that. So we're gonna actually basically whenever we change the screen, we're gonna fill it with zeros. That way we can draw whatever we want on top of the zeros. Um, but if we just want to leave something zero, we don't have to write anything there. So now, um, let me zoom in a little bit. Now, if I go off the screen up here, it should basically clear everything. Yep. And now I'm basically free up here. I can go left. Now I'm free here. Now I can go down. And then if I go right, I'll be back in the original screen. Oh. That's not good. Uh, I went up, down. Did I? Hold on. Let me see what N and O are. Whoa. Uh... Maybe, did I add one to Y both times? Let me double check that. Let's see, add one to X. Or add one, add one to N, minus one from N. Add one to O, add one to O. Okay, so we need to subtract one from O if we're going up which would be here. Yeah. So anyway, now now it should work. So now if I go off the top of the screen, okay, everything will disappear and I'm free by myself without the W and F and when I go back down, uh, I'll be back where the W and the F are. So now I can go as far out as I want, but as long as I come back to the same screen, that W and F will always appear there. So they're basically, I just made the world basically like infinitely large in a sense. So um, I wanna make that transition, I can't really make it quicker, but I might be able to make it look a little more smooth by just clearing the screen and then saying something like loading or something like, um, Yeah, we can do something like that, like loading, you know. And then right before we actually like draw anything. Um, I guess we can we can clear it again. But it, it'll take longer to load later on, so right now it might just be kind of instant where you don't see the loading. Um, but that's because we're not really storing many things into the values, but eventually it's going to take probably like twice as long because not only are we going to be outputting to the screen, but we're also going to be, before that, we're going to be storing things into the A matrix. So, yeah, it is going to take a while to load probably about twice the time that it takes now. Um, but it should be worth it because we can we can move around and pretty much go anywhere we want. Uh, we can put walls, of course, all around. Uh, we can test the wall thing actually right right now. So I can um, I can edit this. So we'll say we'll we'll go for n is. Uh, negative one basically. So if n equals negative one, 
then, okay, so I'm basically, this is the x coordinate of all the screens that are going to be left to the, the starting one. Okay, so that, that would always go inside this statement right here. And then, um, if O equals 0, so this is basically, you know, describing one particular screen, which is the screen to our left. Then we're going to store 9, which is a wall, into matrix A. And we'll put it at... Uh, we'll put it at 5, 16. So now we have kind of like a wall that's going to be to our left. Um, and if we go right here and try to move left, um, we're hitting the wall and then it pushes us back. So it's like, nope, you can't go there because there's a wall right there. And it correctly loaded back our old screen. So there we go. That is episode 8. I'm glad to keep things a little more short this time. Um, and we successfully made a, an infinite traversal, traversable world where we can uh, move around um, with basically correctly working screen borders um, and eventually just kind of be able to come back to wherever we started. Um, and this gives us the ability just kind of to create a world. So I can basically start designing worlds now. I might even create like a little a loop that actually just draws the world. We can draw the world like in a string so that we can see it when we're editing it. And then it'll convert that into a matrix and find values for each of those. Or we might even just keep it as like substrings and just use those as we walk around. Um, but I think matrix values are easier to, to work with for everything else. Uh, strings only are important because of the fact that we need to display it. That's pretty much the only upside that they get. So, thank you for watching episode 8. And we'll see um, what we can work on and complete next time for next episode. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.